Hello again, I'm Robert Fithin. It looks like Rhino throwing themselves into the audiophile ring like Mobile Fidelity or Speaker's Corner, all the others. Rhino now has Rhino High Fidelity, and this is the very first release. It's the Cars debut album, as you can uh, clearly see here. This just arrived in the mail today. It is mail order only. It is a gatefold. Beautiful in this cardboard uh, jacket here. Looks really sturdy. Haven't even opened this thing up yet. It's got this little sidebar on here telling you all the goodies that are in here, like 180 gram vinyl. That's, you know how important that is. Uh, also, they've got uh, the heavyweight gatefold jacket, a limited edition. There's only 5,000 of these, so, you know, you don't want to wait. You want to get them now. Also, this has some sort of uh, interview link with uh, Elliot Easton in here, and this is from the original Analog Master Tapes. So, uh, no digital in the link here, according to Rhino. Rhino always puts out quality releases. They've been doing that since the CD days. I've always uh, really appreciated the quality of uh, Rhino uh, releases. And uh, the Cars debut, uh, this just arrived, like I said today. Haven't even opened it yet, but I'm about ready to throw this on and see how great this sounds. And just in case you're wondering, yes, I do have my Cars shoes on. <laughs> Can you see that? Shown these before. But yeah, the Cars... Uh, I will be uh, giving a report. So now I have spun this thing not only once, but had to spin it again before I came back onto the video. And wow, it sounds absolutely fantastic. And I, I thought it would. I mean, it is uh, Rhino. Um, not only Rhino, but now Rhino high quality. But yeah, Rhino has always been a great go-to for uh, great sounding uh, audio. I remember going all the way back to the 80s with their CDs where they used to make the uh, oldies compilations. Uh, you know, the music from the 50s and 60s, and they made it sound incredible. Other, other you know, labels were using, like, I don't know, it sounds like C and D Submasters, but Rhino, always been uh, a great, you know, go-to for high quality. And uh, now we're all these years later back to vinyl uh, with Rhino. And dead quiet vinyl, by the way. That was the first thing. The vinyl is, uh, like I said, it's 180 gram. I don't think that matters to a lot of us, but it is dead quiet vinyl. And there's no, like, uh, clicks or pops, and there's no you know, distortion or anything. There's no like little bits of vinyl falling off the thing. You don't have to clean this before you play it. Um, so yeah, awesome right off the bat. And uh, just, just from the first few seconds, you know, that um, uh, good times roll with the guitar on one channel and the keyboard doo, doo, really uh, impressed immediately. Uh, just sounding very full the, uh, the, the uh, just only on one channel, the keyboard still coming out really full and rich and just the stereo landscape. You don't have a lot of stereo separation usually on late 70s rock albums, but this is an exception. So there's all kinds of stereo separation on here, making for a great full landscape. My Best Friend's Girl pretty much starts the same way. Uh, isolated instruments, just one on each channel. You've got the plucking, like the, the do, 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 on the guitar. That sounds incredible. And hand claps. Who thought hand claps could sound so rich and nice and full, but somehow they made the hand claps sound really good on the beginning of that. So yeah, my best friend's girl. Um, the way that Roy Thomas Baker usually produces uh, his, his whole sound thing is a lot of like boxy compression, especially with the, the group doing the background vocals on especially my best friend's girl that is still here uh they didn't really change the sound which you wouldn't want them to you still recognize this as the great cars debut album and so a lot of that drum compression is still there a lot of the group vocal uh, all compressed together is still there the roy thomas baker signature sound is still there it just sounds like it's been brought to life so it's not enhanced or remixed or, it, you know, it's not like, oh, this sounds different. It doesn't sound different. It just sounds like it's brought to life. It's like watching an old color movie where the colors are kind of faded and now the cover, colors are much more vibrant and vivid, if that makes sense. That's, it's kind of like that. It's just so much more vivid, but it's not changed. So that's the great thing. You move on to um, Just What I Needed, which always sounded kind of boxy. It still sounds that way. It still has a signature, almost monophonic sound. It's probably the least improved um, on the album. Um, I'm in touch with your world. Uh, is kind of a quirky little minimalist tune with just a lot of pings and and cymbal uh, taps and things like that. A little little effects going on all over. They're really very defined. You can really detect every little thing going on. You can kind of listen to the song three times. And, he, and just kind of focus on one particular thing going on. It's all very, very clear and dynamic. 
uh, even though it's like I said, like kind of a minimalist thing with just some, you know, keyboard effects and the and the and the symbol tapping and all that. But all of it sounds very enveloped. All of it sounds very distinct. The vocal effect at the beginning of uh, "I'm in Touch with Your World" has that kind of echo sound. It fills the room. It's like two speakers are doing this, but it sounds so much more dimensional than that. And on the original, it kind of sounded a little more back. You know, it was kind of bouncing back and forth back here. Now it's it's a whole spectrum of uh, you know like sound with that um, kind of flanged uh, echo vocal at the beginning of that. Don't you stop? Uh, closes off side one. And again, little things that I'm noticing that I, I hadn't really heard very clearly before. The CD um, and the uh, record sound kind of muddled in places. And by the way, this blows away my CD uh, that I've had for years. This is an original CD from the 80s. This hasn't been remastered or anything. Always sounded kind of digitally compressed. Um, sounded great for CD, but um, yeah, this is much more dynamic. And it's even better, dare I say... Then the uh, first pressing on this is a specialty uh, records uh, pressing, and um, yeah, they usually had specialty do their pressings, Electra, and this is the specialty one, and yeah, it's better than an original pressing to my ears, and I have really big ears, so that's that makes me an expert. Look at these, so yeah, the Cars debut. I mean, so far I am just so uh, really impressed by this. Side one it runs kind of close to the label. Uh, but there still doesn't seem to be any um, kind of inner groove distortion or anything that I could detect, at least. this uh, I don't think I said this, but this was uh, mastered by Kevin Gray. All analog mastering, so obviously a terrific job there. Side 2 opens with You're All I've Got Tonight. Great song. Oh, these are all great, actually. But uh, that is where the big bass drumming really shines at the beginning of that song. It really shows off the big, powerful bass sound, which there isn't really a lot on this album it's not like it's pink floyd the wall or something where the bass just comes busting out of the speakers but on the beginning of that song you can really tell it so uh it shows that off there bye bye love probably my favorite track on the whole album wow really just crystal clear really dynamic sounding i, I can't really pinpoint anything in that song in particular that really shines through but it's just incredible so is moving in stereo the only thing missing moving in stereo is of course jennifer jason lee taking her top off uh, that is not uh, on the record, but uh, I used to work at a Blockbuster video uh, before radio, and uh, we were always having to replace our Fast Times at Ridgemont High VHSs because people kept wearing out the pool scene, you know, rewinding, play it back, rewind. You do that enough on older VCRs that were kind of junked. The tape would get crinkled and everything. There'd be lines through it and everything. And we had like four different copies of it was i think that was the the movie that was older that we had more copies of than and everything else we had multiple copies of was a new release but that one we had to have four copies of people kept ruining them with the jennifer jason lee scene anyway uh yeah and then it ends with uh, all mixed up another great uh, album track there and it sounds uh, dynamic as well again no inner groove distortion on side two either so this is a beaut i'm so glad i got this and like i said limited to 5,000 copies they're individually numbered but you cannot see your number unless you take it out of the shrink wrap and remove this little uh side band here so that the uh, number is waiting for you underneath that so um yeah i'm very impressed with the sound quality of this and i would definitely recommend it but like i said you probably don't want to wait limited to 5,000 copies i've already seen on discogs people are trying to sell these they have sold these for $65. It's like, but you're buying it from the internet. Why not just go to rhino.com and buy it there? Um, yeah, not available in stores, only available from the uh, Rhino website. And uh, I've compared this to the original pressing, much better than the original pressing, definitely better than the original CD. I saw uh, a video review of this from Safe and Sound Texas Audio Excursion, and he compared it to the Nautilus pressing which is i said in a previous video that that's the one i wanted to get before i knew this was coming out and he said that it was better than that i have uh, i know somebody that has the mobile fidelity sounds better than that i'm not a big fan of mobile fidelity anyway so i was not surprised by that this doesn't have anything to do with their digital stuff i've never really been a big fan of mobile fidelity to me it sounds like they just boost the bass and lower the mid-range and that's what the cars thing sounded like in this this sounds like a big experience. It doesn't sound like somebody just boosted the bass up. But yeah, love this. Um, and this is what the record looks like, by the way. Um, you know, you've got the red and black here and then reversed for side B. It comes in a poly-lined black sleeve, so very attractive and very protective. You don't have to remove a paper sleeve and replace it yourself. They've already got the poly-lined uh, ready for you. And speaking of ready, 
Are you ready for the negatives? You knew I was going to get there sooner or later. The album cover, as you might be able to see in the video, I'm not sure. This has shrink wrap, this doesn't. But this is a little more vivid. This looks just slightly washed out. It's very, very slight. I don't know if you can tell the difference there. This is, has a little more contrast in the colors. And this is a little more, you can see kind of like the white kind of washed out there where this is, the blacks are really deep blacks. So there's that. Not a major thing. What is a major thing, though, is the package that it comes in. This is the way the album will arrive. And it does take about a week. It took about a week to get to me. So I'm used to the Amazon thing where it's there like two days later. But this is, where it, this is how it comes. I didn't take anything out of this box. Nothing protective. No bubble wrap. No anything. Just this. Fold it over like this. And like this with the album inside. So... Uh, I've seen on Discogs several people, and I'm talking 10 or 12 people, complaining about dinged corners. The album just bounces around in here. I, thankfully, was one of the lucky ones. The, there's no dinged corners on this. But, uh, yeah, a lot of complaints about dinged corners and trying to contact Rhino, and they are very, very busy. Probably with people trying to contact them about dinged corners. So you got to watch out for that. But other than that, excellent. And uh, this, like I said, was the first release from Rhino High Fidelity, $40. It's about $51 once you get the $7.99 shipping and handling, which I think is a little uh, much for shipping and handling. So there's another negative. You've got a lot of $8 shipping and handling. And then, of course, tax is going to bring it up to over a little over $50, but um, it's advertised as $40. Still a great price for an audiophile thing like this, done right with the gatefold, which, you know, the original is not a gatefold, so they've got uh, that that's great. Nice hard cardboard uh, sleeve. Just wish it was uh, trans uh, transferred a little better, you know, and then just this cardboard and it's jumping around in there. It can cause ding corners. And the uh, only other thing was, like I said, this is the very first release from Rhino High Fidelity. I was looking forward to what they were going to do next. And they've already got their next release lined up. And it's some John Coltrane bullshit. So... There's that. I was hoping maybe they would keep in the vein of this type of music. Maybe some Blondie. Maybe a Blondie, Eat to the Beat, or Parallel Lines. Maybe Pretenders. Now we get some more John Coltrane because we needed some more of that. I, maybe, what about Prince? Prince doesn't have any audio. We could do some Prince. Maybe some Isley Brothers 3 Plus 3. Just a random album that just came into my head. I don't think there's an audio file of that. You know, all kinds of great albums out there waiting for Rhino. We don't need some more jazz. We need some more good stuff. Please, Rhino, help us out. Don't be Blue Note. We already got Blue Note. Don't need more of that. Tone poet. Anyway, I'm Robert Fifth, and hopefully you found this review uh, helpful. But yeah, really impressed. Impressed with that, that they can do this for 40 bucks. 53 after you're done with shipping and handling. But uh, yeah, great. Awesome. The Cars debut. Incredible album. Pretty much, you know seven six six huge hits on here three great album tracks love it